Hey, I am Kimbo. I blog out a girl in a glue gun.com and this is my YouTube channel. A few years ago, I posted a pretty popular YouTube video called How I Design My Cup Files. It was basically just an introduction on this amazing app called Procreate. It's how I design my cup files, my printables, my stickers. But everybody thought it was going to be a tutorial on how to turn those images into SVGs. Well, that video has nothing to do with SVGs. This video has everything to do with SVGs. I'm going to teach you how to take your images that you design and turn them into different image formats, including SVGs, so you can cut them out with your silhouette or Cricut or whatever. So I offer a lot of free cut files on my website and I have some in my shop and I like to save in four different image formats. I save in a PNG, a JPEG, an SVG, and a DXF. I just feel like that covers my bases with all the different softwares that are out there so hopefully someone can find something that works with that for them. All right, let's jump in. We're gonna cover it all. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below and make sure to subscribe if you like this video because I have tons more just like it. So I drop my cup files in the Procreate app. It's just what I use. There are lots of different ways to create cup files. You can create them in Canva, you can create them in um, Silhouette Software. There's a couple other different ones, but this is what I use. I just like it. I actually have a whole YouTube video on like the basics of it, of what I do for my cut files. So for today, we are just gonna do a simple strawberry. All right, so let's pretend this is a big, beautiful cup file that I spent a lot of time on. Well, obviously I did not. Um, this is how I save them. I save them in a couple different formats because I wanna make sure that people have options. Um, I, know, I know it works in my silhouette and I know it works in a Cricut, but I know there's so many other, I know Glowforge you can use files and I know that people have brother I think they're called scan and cut. So I just know there's a lot of different softwares out of there. So why I'm here, I just make sure that I save it in the four formats. Before I save, I will click and I will take off the background layer. If you can see, it's still there. It's very dark. I'm gonna click the wrench. We get a drop down menu. I'm gonna save this as a PNG. When you are removing that background, just click save image. When you're removing that background, this PNG is really gonna act like an SVG when you upload it. So if you have the basic silhouette software and you can't upload SVGs, this PNG without the background is gonna upload really similar. I'm gonna show you later in the video, I promise. And then while I'm here, I'm gonna save this as a JPEG too. Now, even though this doesn't have the background on it, saving it as a JPEG, it will save as one flat layer. It'll look like this. The JPEG will not get rid of any of the background. And let me show you the difference. So this one is the PNG. When I click on it, you can see it has no background. This one is the JPEG. It will always have that background. So you can trace these in the Silhouette software, but if you're not gonna get any cut lines with this because it's gonna see it as one big flat image, that JPEG. So my cut files, I designed them all in black and white because the software that I use to convert them to SVGs, it just makes it so everything is nice and clean. And then after I'm finished, I will duplicate it and then I can go in and add color and if you wanna add in a color option in there as well. So that is, you can offer that on the side, but I always make sure that I save them black and white before I do any color options. Now, since these are on my iPad, you can either email these images over to your computer. I don't think the program that I use, I couldn't get it to download on my iPad. So you'll have to use your computer, but I just email it or I have Google Photos, so these automatically save to my Google Photos and then I can open them up on my computer. Or if you have a Mac, you can just you know, shoot them right over. So just get them over to your computer however you want and then we're gonna work from there. All right, I'm on my computer. I've transferred over the images. Normally I just transfer the JPEG, the PNG, but I transferred over these so you could see um, how they work in the Silhouette software. But right now we are going to convert them to SVGs and DXFs. 
It's the same program. It's a free program, and I love it. It is called Inkscape, inkscape.org. You can click download. There's actually a ton of like helpful information that shows you how Inkscape works. Like I said, it's free and it does quite a bit. It can, it has a bunch of fonts and drawings. So if you are looking for maybe a good design software and you don't want to splurge and do, um, like any other Adobe ones, then this will be a great one for you. Um, cause it's free. So play around, look at all these amazing features on the side, but I just use it. Like I said, I love my procreate. I like to use my pencil. So that's what I use. So I purely just use this to convert it to SVGs and DXFs. So I'm going to go over to file. I'm going to click open and you can use either the JPEG or the PNG. Either one, it's going to turn it into an SVG. So it doesn't matter if there's white around it or not. It's going to read all that black or like it'll just outline around the black. So I'm going to use the JPEG. I'm going to click on it. Make it big so you can see. Click on it and you can see that I have a box around it. I'm going to go over here. This is up, but I'm going to show you how to get there. Click path and you click trace bitmap. Pops up this, making sure that the, the image, whatever it is, is highlighted. You're going to click OK. And you can see there's immediate a box. This is the SVG. It is going clear just purely around the image. I've got two images here. One, this is the big JPEG. That's the SVG. So I'm going to delete the JPEG, make sure that this is on the workspace. And then I'm going to go over here to file, save as, and then there's a drop down menu. And I'm going to do plain SVG, push save. And then I'm going to do the same thing, save as, and then I'm going to drop down all the way to DXF. And I use this one. I don't know if there's a difference between the 12 and the 14. When you push save, you'll have this pop-up box. I have never changed any of this. I just push OK, and it makes the DXF for me. It really is that easy and free, which I love. So let me show you. This is the Silhouette Studio software. I've uploaded all four. Um, just so you can get a visual of what they look like in there. The If you notice, my studio is a business edition. So yours might look a little bit different because there's a little bit more features. The basic edition, you can upload a JPEG or a PNG, but you can't upload an SVG. So if you are making sure that you're saving these correctly without a background, then it should be fine. fine. Also, there is an amazing trace button. So if you only have a JPEG, I'll show you real quickly. You can just trace around it. If it's a nice black and white image, I mean, it gets really nice crisp lines. So, but this is how they come. The DXF separates. It's not one flat image. The SVG and the PNG are pretty similar. And then the JPEG, you can tell. It has no cut lines or anything. So when I pretend like I'm sending it, these three are ready to cut and the JPEG's not. But if I'm uploading a PNG that has a color or you didn't get rid of the background, it's not going to work. So this one, this one is a, the PNG, but I did not remove the background. So even though it is a PNG, you would still have to trace it and so you could get some cut lines because right now there isn't any cut lines. And this one, you can see that the grid doesn't go through. So this strawberry is white, but there is no background. So I remove the background. Strawberry is still a color. When I send it, you're going to get a nice outline. So that's how I wouldn't recommend this for cut files, but if you're using stickers, that's why you can color in stickers. It's going to pick up the outside, but it's not going to pick up any of the inside because now it just sees it as one flat color. Ooh, I also wanted to show you in Inkscape what happens if you upload something in color and try to turn it into an SVG. I've got it highlighted. I already have my bitmap up, so I'm just going to push OK and it's going to transfer over. So it, now it just sees it. It doesn't recognize the different colors. So it's just going to give me one big blob. And that's why I don't upload anything with color unless it's for stickers so 
And like I've mentioned, there may be better softwares out there. This is just what I use. I love it because it's free and it's fast and I'm kind of a creature of habit. So when I find something that works, that's just, that's just what I do. Okay, I also wanted to mention before we click over and show you what those images look like in Cricut, but the Silhouette Studio Business Edition, you can export SVG. So you can design in there as well. They've, it uploads like whatever font you have on your computer, it drops them into the Silhouette Studio. Um, and then you can save these as SVGs. So if you wanna design something in there, that's also an option. All right, let's click over to Cricut. Um, I don't like, I don't love Cricut as much as the Silhouette software. I don't play around. I know basics of how to make it work, but so I'm just going to show you this. Don't ask me any questions. <laughs> don't ask me any questions about this, but I'm going to show you the differences really quickly. So you can see here, it says you can upload PNGs, JPEGs, SVGs, DXFs. So those are all, um, the images that I save as. So I'm going to click browse. I'm going to find my strawberries. Okay, so let's just start with, let's do a JPEG. So this is the normal flat. Um, they do have this select image. So I'm going to do moderately, maybe simple. Let's try to see if we can do simple. You're going to click continue. And then it has this thing that you can just select and it will get rid of anything that's not part of it. Um, it seems really easy, but I have this cut file that you put on your machine. It's like a really intricate one. It says, I think, create, and then it has all these craft supplies. And so when people are trying to unselect it all, they were like, it takes forever to try to unselect. So that's why it's a little bit important to have the SVG for that option. Because if it's something really intricate and small, you're having to like zoom in and unclick each little section. But if you're doing words, something bigger, it's not that, not that hard. So that's the JPEG. And then you select, you know, if you want to just cut it out or print then cut. So we'll do cut image, upload. So JPEG. JPEGs work great in there. Let's upload the PNG. So the PNG with the white on the inside and the white all the way around are going to work the exact same as the JPEG where you're going to unclick. We're going to click this PNG, which has all the background removed. You can see, push simple. Nothing needs to be removed. Just push apply and continue. So PNG works great. SVG is this weird guy. And it doesn't even give me the option because it just knows. I think that's why people prefer SVGs is because it's just you upload it and you're done. You don't have to select anything. You don't have to, you know, deal with that at all. But I did show you, I mean, how is, easy is it to do JPEGs or PNGs too? Okay, so this is the DXF and it has, it's just kind of a little bit different how it picks it up. It doesn't give you the option at all to do a print and cut with those. Oh my goodness, I just looked out the window and it is snowy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cricut Design Space, I've uploaded them all so you could see them. DXF, SVG, uh, PNG, JPEG. These are, ignore the names, they're all labeled wrong, but you can unclick the INC. That's the regular JPEG, that's the PNG, and that is the SVG. They're all the same. The DXF is going to separate. Look at all these cuts. So when you send it over, you're going to get it in all these different pieces, which is amazing if you're gonna if you want to layer the strawberry with green and red and what like if you want to do the seeds in a different color it has done all that dirty work for you so i love that option so all four work in the Cricut design space and depending on what edition you have at least these two work in your silhouette studio all right so we have all these images saved but if you are trying to um, add these to your Etsy shop 
or you need to send them to people. Sometimes it's easier to send them zipped. They're a little bit more compressed. Um, I'm going to show you. This is my Etsy shop. This is the cut file I was telling you about that's super intricate, so it's really hard to unpiece each one. Um, but this one says there's two different sizes. There's eight cut files, and Etsy allows you to upload five. So I had to upload a zipped file because I just had too many. So to do the zipped, it's really easy. I go into my Google Drive. Um, I click new, I create a folder and I, I called it strawberry and then I click onto that folder. So I'm inside that folder. I'm going to do file upload and then I'm going to upload the DXF, the JPEG, the SVG and the PNG. So these two are labeled JPEG. So this is the SVG. That's the DXF. It's because I uploaded this one that was called the JPEG. So normally after I upload my JPEG and my PNG, I label them correctly, and then as I save them from Inkscape, they they save as whatever the image that you uploaded it. So if I would have named this SVG Strawberry Cut File, then these would have also been saved as that. So I'm going to upload those. You can see I've already started getting images for my blog posts, <laughs> saving them all in that file. So they're uploading here. This is what they're going to look like. They're all in there. You can share it. You can get a link. So you can just put a link. If you have a blog post, you want a link to it, you can do that. Um, you can click this and click download and it's going to drop the whole zipped file in your downloads. And then when you're in your Etsy shop, you can just upload that file directly into it. You can also upload it into your website for an easy download as well. So that's how you create the zipped file if you need it. But like I said, if you only had, I only had four on a couple of the other cut files. So you don't necessarily have to do them zipped. You can upload just the images that you've created if you want. Okay. Start to finish. I hope you guys learned something. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions down below. I always feel like I forget something because there's just a lot of information out there. So leave me any comments down below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you later. Have a great day.